Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Rohan. I'm a second year medical student studying at the University of Cambridge. In this video, I'll be sharing some specific tips for A-level physics and also what the main topics to revise are. Reflecting on my experience of taking physics at A-level, physics was definitely my most enjoyable subject. It really brings back some fond memories. We had an amazing class where we just had so much fun doing practicals, having banter with the teachers and just general vibing. I was pleasantly surprised to find that many students doing medicine in my year also enjoyed physics a lot. I think it's a really good fourth subject for people applying to medicine because there's not too much content, it's mainly about understanding and application of knowledge. It's also directly useful for some concepts of medicine. For example, capacitance really helps with the understanding of nerve conduction because the membrane of a neuron essentially acts as a capacitor, although by no means it's essential for medicine. I also genuinely believe studying physics gives you so many transferable skills and makes you a better scientist overall. For example, we did a practical every week. So by the end, we were really proficient in data handling, getting graphs into the useful form, using Microsoft Excel, critically evaluating results. I always got really excited when I could use a concept in physics to help me in other subjects. And honestly, this happened quite a lot. I also think that doing a subject which is so fundamental to the workings of the universe really develops that analytical mind of getting to the core of how things actually work. But it wasn't always like this for me. In fact, at the start, I really wanted to drop physics. I found it really tough. I think it's because, as I said before, it's quite a conceptual topic. So sometimes it takes quite a while for the ideas to sink in. So I found exam questions really tough. In fact, I remember my first piece of homework, I got nine out of 17 and I thought maybe I'm just not cut out for physics. However, for some strange reason, I decided instead of just winging physics until the end of year 12 when I can drop it, I was gonna give it a really good go and try my hardest to understand everything. So I remember that first Christmas holiday, I remember doing every single question from the textbook and all the past paper questions which our teachers had set us for electricity and mechanics. What actually happened was I ranked top of the year in the January assessments in physics by quite a decent margin. Now this isn't me trying to toot my own horn, I'm just trying to get across that you can absolutely hustle physics and do well in it. It isn't the case that you either get physics naturally or you don't. Hard work will always pay dividends. Okay, sorry for the long preamble, but yeah, I loved physics at A-level and I want to encourage everyone to give it a shot if they're interested. Now, like the other videos in the series, we're gonna highlight some of the main topics at physics A-level. This is by no means an exhaustful list, but hopefully it's a useful guide. First, we have mechanics. There's actually quite a lot of overlap with the mechanics and A-level maths, but in physics, it tends to be a bit more conceptual with far more explained types of questions in addition to your calculations. Also, in physics, you cover some things which aren't covered in the normal maths A-level, such as momentum, circular motion, simple harmonic motion, and even a bit of material science. Particle physics is fun because you really get a sense that you're dealing with the fundamental constituents of the universe. It's a bit surreal doing calculations based on single nucleons and electrons crashing into each other, as well as learning about new particles, you also get to learn about wave particle duality and the photoelectric effect, which is fascinating. Waves was surprisingly enjoyable compared to GCSE. The main themes was the difference between progressive and stationary waves and stuff like harmonics calculations. You had concepts like interference, which included a Young's double slit experiment, diffraction and refraction. Then we had electricity. This was quite similar to GCSE, but you get more complicated circuit problems you also get introduced to new concepts like resistivity, the potential divider, and the consequences of internal resistance. Fields was an exciting new concept. It covered gravitational, electric, and magnetic fields, as well as capacitance. Next is thermodynamics. And finally, you have your option. So for AQA, I think astrophysics was the most popular, but our school did turning points, which was just absolutely fascinating. I couldn't recommend it more. It was amazing how some of the early discoveries were made by using just simple apparatus in such a clever way. For example, just think about how you'd calculate the speed of light or a charge of electron before like the age of computers or modern technology. Actually blows your mind. I hope that's broken down physics into something more manageable. Now let's talk about some top tips which helped me when studying for A-level physics. Firstly, in terms of resources, I didn't look too much beyond the textbook and our class notes because I felt as long as you understand something, there's no point of looking much elsewhere. However, besides the PMT website, I really like this website called UMUTEC. I think that's how you pronounce it. This basically sorted past paper questions by topic. I really like this website because I think they did a good job of collating all the harder calculations and explain questions from the old specification. 
I've linked it in the description box below for you to check out. Next is, I advise you to get really familiar with the formula book. I know it's really big, but at least knowing where you can find a specific formula and even memorizing a couple will save you precious time in the exam. So long as you do enough practice, you'll know most of the equations off by heart and you'll probably even memorize stuff like the mass of a proton, mass of a neutron, and I even think I remember the mass of an electron was 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. Um, Thirdly, it's really important when explaining a process in physics that you're really precise and always refer your explanation back to an equation. If you fail to do this and systematically go through each step of an explanation, you start only getting like half marks on the explain questions, which means you start hemorrhaging a ton of marks. And for these explanations, make sure you know the exact phraseology they use in the mark schemes. For example, when I was just flicking through my bulletproof document, and if you don't know what that is, please go watch my video on general A-level revision strategies for thermodynamics. I found some mistakes which I kept making, and they were like, you had to always refer to average kinetic energy, and when you're talking about rate of collisions, you had to say something like collisions per second to get the mark. And it's these small marks here and there which add up to separate the A from the A-star candidates. For mechanics problems in particular, make sure that you draw a big diagram and label all the forces. This goes without saying, and you should be familiar with this from maths. Finally, both paper one and paper two have an MCQ section. This is actually surprisingly difficult and requires its own exam technique. The key is to getting really quick at the algebraic manipulation, as many of the questions involves seeing how many times one variable changes if you change another and you keep another constant. It's also important to recognize the common traps people fall into. For example, not converting grams or kilograms into newtons. It's also important to identify which questions you know you probably wouldn't get the answer right, even if you spent a long time trying and you just guess and move on. It's because some of the questions genuinely actually require three or four steps of working out, and this is a bit much for one mark. Hence, it's usually better to set like a threshold of like 60 seconds per question, and then after that you just guess and move on, regardless of where you're up to, because there'll probably be some easier MCQs where you can gain marks on towards the end of the exam. So that's it for this video. If you found it useful, please give this video a like and consider subscribing to the channel for more content like this in the future. You might want to check out this video series which I've been making on A-level tips for each subject and also for A-levels in general. I'm sure you'll find it helpful. Anyway, take care and bye for now.